There are many ways that we can hurt our head or our spine, and this video is just going to briefly introduce some of the ways that we can hurt our spine for my EMT students. Um, one of the ways that we can do it is we can flex too far. So we bend this way. This may happen if um, something hits you in the back of the head or you were diving and you hit your head and you flex too far that way. You can extend too far. And we can see that some with falls, but you tend to think of more of that with a whiplash type injury from getting rear-ended in a car accident where the head snaps back. Now, if you have your headrest in the proper place, it should not cause major trauma, but it can still cause some pain. Now, if something strikes you directly on the head, on top of the head, or if you're diving or fall and land directly on your head, that can compress your head, uh, compress your spine, and then kind of blow out one of your, your vertebrae, uh, cause a compression fraction, uh, fracture, not fraction, fracture, um, and then rotation. And I, and I always laughed, as a martial arts instructor, I've sometimes been asked, do I really work on learning how to snap people's necks? Because that's just something we, practice all the time in class, which is why I have so few students, yeah. Um, but we can have our head rotated too far, and we can see that in somebody that was maybe hit in a car accident um, and spun, so it was a, a lateral impact and their spun and then their head spins, or from a fall. Um, so that's a rotation thing. Now a distraction is when the head moves up away from the rest of the body. And we see this primarily in hangings, um, although, growing up in Wisconsin, we had some snowmobile accidents where somebody would be zipping across a field at night and would catch a, a fence or a, a barbed wire or something and it would stretch and hurt their neck. And there was a time where we had a type of seatbelt that was an automatic seatbelt that would latch and come across um, up here to the shoulder and latch to the door, but you didn't put your seatbelt lap belt on. So you had the chest, but not the lap. And then if you did the down and under, the seatbelt would catch and would um, potentially distract uh, and damage the spine. And then we also have penetration, where we have maybe a shooting or a stabbing, and the bullet enters somewhere along midline or bounced and then damaged the spine. One thing about penetrating trauma is if the uh, penetration is done, so they've already been shot or been stabbed, so by the time we get there, um, and they don't have any neural deficits, the chances of that damaging the spine any further are, are slim to none. So we oftentimes don't have to worry as much about spinal motion restriction and penetrating trauma if it's not um, directly midline or they don't have any neural deficits with it. Now, obviously, if we suspect this, we should evaluate the patient. We have a whole spinal motion restriction or clearing C-spine in the field protocol that we follow. Um, if you are um, suspecting it, then of course the person um, early on in the assessment, like during scene assessment, consider it. And then one of the first things we're gonna do is try to get them to hold their head still until we can get there and just manually hold their head still. That's called spinal motion uh, or spinal precaution, spinal, not really spinal motion restriction, but spinal precaution is they just hold the head still until we can continue with the assessment. And then if needed, apply the C-collar and stabilize them to a, a spine board. If they do have a neck or back injury, and we don't treat it, there's a risk of permanent paralysis and then the long-term treatment of somebody that's paralyzed. Um, if there is a non-displaced fracture, meaning the bones have not moved and we don't stabilize them, then there's a possibility that those bones could move and then their, their jagged edges could cause more damage to the spine or bleeding into the area and more swelling. So Theoretically, the primary injury, when the spinal cord first gets hurt in the injury, there's not a whole lot we can do to treat that. But a lot of times, it's not the spinal cord itself that gets hurt. It's some of the ligaments and tendons and blood vessels around it, or maybe the bones around it. And by keeping that stuff still, by splinting it using a cervical collar and a spine board, we can minimize any secondary trauma to the spinal cord as those injuries swell and bleed in the area. And that's really what we're trying to do with our spinal motion restriction, is trying to minimize any further damage. Um, time will tell. Um, of course, x-rays and that sort of thing they tell the hospital, but a lot of times they can't tell right away how bad the spinal cord or how bad the paralysis may be. We have to wait for the swelling to go down and see if that um, decompresses or no longer presses onto the spinal cord and then that, that part of the spine can resume normal functioning. So we'll talk in another video about how to assess and how to clear C-spine, but that's just a little bit about some of the ways that our neck and back can get hurt.